I'm Bob Savakinis. Welcome to our program in a nutshell. Today our guest is Julie Esty, and Julie has many things that she has going on in the next month or so. So we're going to spend a little bit of time to learn about these fascinating activities and things that are going on. Julie, welcome to our program. Hey, Bob. Nice to see you again. Good to see you again. It's been a few years since you were last mm -hmm. on the show, and it's good to welcome you back. And let's talk about some of these great things that you have going on. First of all, I know you have a new book booklet out, and it's kind of geared towards a little mystery and everything. You want to tell us about that? I do. I have a new publication called The Center Street Murders. A few years ago, I put a book out called Murder in Scranton, and I addressed the murders of two women from the area between 1902 and 1904. And as I researched that a little bit more over the years, it appears that there were other women that were killed between 1902 and 1905. And I'm suspecting, I'm tossing out a theory here that possibly one man killed them and left the area and went to New York State and killed another woman before he was finally caught and executed. So. So what inspires you to write these stories? I really don't know. I mean, it's, it's, there are so many different avenues in Scranton's history, and they're all interesting. It's just that some of them are more interesting than others. And some of the things that went on down here in downtown Scranton were really interesting. I mean, this was such a hotbed of illicit activity you know, from prostitution to drug abuse and gambling. And a lot of people don't realize that now. So, you know, you find these, these folks that are living down here in this area, and, you know, every one of them, every one of them is a story. And they're interesting. And this story, The Center Street Murders, talks about the axe murders of two fallen angels, soiled doves, working ladies, who were living on Center Street, which is down from where the Old Globe Store used to be, that court that's right down from the Old Globe Store. So for someone who's interested in finding this booklet, purchasing and everything, where can they find it? How could they get it? Um, they can get it from me on tour days, which I'll be in the Dunmore Cemetery on October 1st and 8th. Of course, the wonderful Lackawanna Historical Society is going to have it. The Library Express will have it very shortly. And we have a, a big event coming up on September 30th at the Viewmont Mall. It's a history fair. And I will be there along with some other wonderful groups that have all kinds of wonderful historical wares to, to sell and enlighten people about um, at the Viewmont Mall. So we're going to be available. OK. How, did, how does this compare with the last booklet that you did as far as like your research and what you had to put into making this book, booklet come out? The last thing that I did was a cookbook. Okay. And that was all recipes from like the 1920s and the 1930s. So, you know, it's, it's just a whole different group of ladies. You know, the last book was women who were taking care of their homes and they're entering a contest with the local newspapers to try and win a prize and have the recipes published. And, this book is about ladies who are doing something totally different than the ladies making boiled cakes. All right, these ladies have a whole other... Different hobbies. <laughs> yeah, well, again, they're working ladies, and, and they're living a very hard life. You know, and, and I address that at the end of the book. You know, four women were killed between 1902 and 1905. All of them had very similar causes of death with their heads being bludgeoned. And of course, at that time, police did not have the know-how. It's not their fault. They just didn't have what we have available today to solve this. But one of the things I'm trying to say here is what would have happened if these weren't working ladies? Suppose they were a, a higher social class. Would, they have, would, would their deaths have received more attention and more investigation than they did? Then you have another lady who's involved in this whole thing, and she comes forward after the murders of the, years after the murder of the two women on Center Street, and she said, I was living with this man, I was married to him, you know, now he's in New York State. They're going to execute him. I'm telling you, he was here. I married him. And the police sent somebody up to New York State 
to question a man who's about to be executed and say, were you living in Scranton, Pennsylvania? And, and, and like, Bob, what would you say? <laughs> you know, he said no. And the police believed him. Well, I found the woman's marriage license. There were spelling errors, and she wasn't lying. She was telling the truth. So it, here you have a case of a woman who's trying to tell people something's going on, and nobody's believing her. How do you get involved as far as the research of all of this? It just snowballs. How much time does this take for you to put this together? A lot. This is years. This is years. This actually started about 17 years ago with a woman who turned up on outside of the train station wearing men's clothing. She was not identified in a newspaper article, and she was categorized as being drunk or under the influence. Well, all these years later, I've identified her, and she factors into this incident with these two women and the man, you know, she was married to this man who ends up being executed. She, she claimed to have been following, she knew he was gonna leave, she claimed to have been following him, and, and her idea of a disguise was to dress like a man. And I don't believe she was intoxicated at the train station. She thought he spotted her, so she went and bought a cigar. Well, you give a lady a cigar, you know, maybe she stood there and inhaled it. She, maybe she's not intoxicated. She might be sick from inhaling a cigar. So it's, it's women, not, not, just, not just those women, but the people who are living in their boarding house, they're rounded up, you know, they got a bad deal because of their social class. They're suspect, you know, people are questioning, well, of course they did it, and this one could have done it, and whatever. And in the end, a man ends up being accused of this, and it's like, case closed, he did it because he committed suicide. Well, he can't defend himself. So it's a fast... There's a, there's a whole mess of stuff going on here. So we're going to encourage our viewers to purchase this book and read this fascinating story yeah, about our Scranton history and a little bit more on the seedier side of, yeah, of things that have happened. Yeah, and that's one thing I'm finding out is that people don't realize that there was a seedier side to Scranton. Oh, you know there was, I know there was. There's a seedier side to every city. So. We're going to encourage our people to check this booklet out and everything, and mm -hmm. we could buy this and find this at a history fair that's going to be at the mm -hmm. Viewmont Mall. And tell us a little bit more details on that, because I have a list of all the different vendors and organizations that are going to be there, various historical societies, and yourself as well, yep. and the Carbondale Historical yep. Society, the German Historical Society, mm -hmm. and various others. And again, that's at the Viewmont Mall. Yes, and from what I understand, it's going to be a great time. You know, any time we all get together, you know, not only is it good for all of us in the organizations that, that we, we represent, because now we're all together and we get to talk to each other, we're out and about talking to the public on a large scale. So, you know, like, I really hope a lot of people turn out for that. You know, there's just going to be so many interesting people there. Like, like you said, the Carbondale Historical Society, we have the Library System, Old Forge Historical Society, the American Legion, you know, Steamtown. You know, that's a good deal. If you're interested in history, it's a good place to turn up. And that's going to be at the Viewmont Mall on September 30th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m.? Right. And it gives you a chance to maybe even start thinking of buying some early Christmas presents or something. Do I even say that word Christmas no, Absolutely. Presents? Absolutely. Great stocking stuffers. Great stuff for the history nerd in, in, in your household. Better yet, think about the people who have left the area. You know, you want to send them something that reminds them of home? Great place to stop and pick up goodies. So we have a great opportunity to meet with about a dozen, maybe 20 organizations or yeah. so. So it sounds like another fun day of good mm -hmm. activities here in Lackawanna County. Julie, let's talk about what you're probably most famous for, which is the Dunmore Cemetery Tour, oh, yeah. the manager coordinator of that. Tell us what to expect and when the Dunmore Cemetery Tour will be happening this year. We are out, the dearly departed players and I are out in the cemetery on October 1st and 8th. Our tours will start at 2 o'clock. Again, as in years past, it's an all-new tour. We've got some really interesting folks on it this year. None of them are famous. They are all regular people who have had very interesting things happen to them. Um, we're going to have, um, I've, I've discovered 
a very interesting new Titanic connection. And of course, with everything that went on with the Titanic this year, kind of had to toss that in. Um, we have a law enforcement official out there who has an interesting connection to the Lindbergh kidnapping case. More mystery in it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we've just we've just got some really interesting folks, and we're we're rehearsing already. And the tour is kind of evolving because it's not just a tour anymore. We have local businesses such as Space Time, um, the Historical Society, Carlucci Golden DeSantis. You know, different groups are decorating mausoleums. Well, last year Kappa joined us. They're going to be out there again. I mean, the mausoleums look absolutely beautiful decorated in a harvest theme, and we're noticing that it's drawing families in. Paying respects to their family and as Not a way to acknowledge. Not just that, they're bringing their children in and they're doing family photographs, which is a really cool thing because if you get the kids in there and you show them that it's not a scary place and that, you know, they make a nice memory, you know, if kids know what they have there, you know, they're more likely to respect it going forward. So we've got the Dunmore Cemetery tour slash what I'm considering a small harvest festival going on, and we can't wait. We love it. We love being out there. We love seeing everybody. So for those viewers who may not be familiar with it, and there's maybe a few, but it's mm -hmm. hard to believe, um, kind of describe for us what it's like to walk through and see this event. What will happen is people will meet at the cemetery gate. Is there a cost? No. No. Okay. We're free. We're always free. Um, they meet at the cemetery gate. Tours start at 2 o'clock. And they will do a walking tour going through the cemetery. There's, I believe, 13 stops this year. I don't really like having 13 stops on a cemetery tour, but I think that's just the way it worked out. And they will have people from the past who are buried in the cemetery tell them their stories. And they're all costumed. And some of them have some interesting goodies to hand out this year because we, like, we really like to do that audience interactive thing going on. And it's great because... You know, it's, it's really neat how the audience gets dragged in. And, you know, they, they think that we're, we're like them. And it's great. It's, it's just great. It's a good time. We draw people from all over the country. And we can't wait to be out there again. You mentioned earlier the dearly departed players. So tell us who and what are the dearly departed players. I know you're very proud of them. The dearly departed players is a group of 14 people from Lackawanna County who are in the arts or not. I mean, some of us are singers, dancers, musicians. Some of us are not. You know, we're just, you know, regular, and I hate to say regular folks, but, you know, some have not ever performed. And we've been together a long time. We're like a family now. Most of us have been together 17 years doing tours. And that's us. There's Nelson, who's our computer whiz. Wendy's our stained glass person. We have Carl Barbie, who's performed all over the world. We have my sister, who was ace at the front, taking care of everything. You know, we have Chrissy Grunza with us this year, who's an amazing ukulele player. You know, it's just when the players get together, I always say that when the players get together, it's like the stars and planets all line up because good things really, really happen. We have Robert Powell from, joining us again from the Carbondale Historical Society. So it's always just a good time. What goes into the preparation of something like this? How many weeks are involved, oh months or, well, just sum it up for us. Like, at what this, is it at like? this point, it's decades now because you have to realize all the years that I've been out researching. So I have file cabinets. So if I want to do a certain theme or whatever, I can go to my file cabinets and I can pull people that I've already looked at. But it's always kind of like, the thrill of the hunt. So like, as soon as one tour ends, I start with another one where I'm out there looking around to see who's new and blah, 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 blah. Then around January, I start writing it. And I'd say maybe by March, I have it all set. And then something causes it to change. And everybody that I had ends up being 12 people that I didn't even know about. It's like, I don't know where you guys came from, but you know what, I'm gonna go with it. So then you get everybody out there, we do a read through, they get their scripts, they find out who they are, and it's like getting their letter from Hogwarts. You know, they're all so excited when they get their scripts, and then we have to, I have to costume them. You know, my attic is like a costume shop, so I costume them, or we order whatever we need. And we rehearse from the middle of July right up until the first show. So that's when they get, we have like almost what, July, August, September, two and a half months to learn our talks. 
and that's it. And then when we pack up and walk out of there, put the costumes away, I take a week off, and it's like, well, I gotta start thinking about what I'm doing next year. But the, you know what? You get good stuff thrown in between, like the Holiday Emporium. Like, I'll get things ready for at Lackawanna Historical Society. I love it. That's a good event. You should go to that. What motivates Julie Esty to spend so much time combining her love of history and the arts together to do the Dunmore Cemetery event, to write these books on our, our booklets on our local stories? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that when I was a kid, everybody was reading all these kid books, and my, my father brought me a book about the Lincoln assassination, and I got hooked onto that avenue, and that brought about the Civil War thing that I do and the mourning thing that I do. And then I ran into a wonderful educator who, in fact, I am putting her on the tour this year, T.C. Connolly. She was my eighth grade history teacher, and she just lit a spark for not just me, but many people. And, of course, T.C. authored the book about the Gravity Railroad. And, you know, she's, she's a lot of the reason that I do what I do. I think she'd be horrified with this. She'd say, can't you find something nice to write about? Because <laughs> this isn't like a nice thing. But she's, she's a real driving force. Even though she passed away a few years ago, it's, it's constantly trying to you know, make her proud, make, make my family proud. And then when you have all this creativity, well, you know because you do it too. It's this constant need to create. So every year I create a small city out in the Dunmore Cemetery, and that's the way it goes. You create films. You know, it's just, it's our makeup. It's a nice way to put it together that you create a city in the Dunmore Cemetery. Yeah. It's a very nice way to put it. So, Julie, what do we have to look forward to in the future? Any projects in the back of your mind right now that you're thinking of other than Dunmore Cemetery I just want to 2024? Get through the tour. <laughs> I, just, I just want to get through a tour. I just really, really want to get through a tour because now it starts to get hairy. I mean, it really, really does. It starts to get hairy. If my daughter decided to come home for a visit now, well, uh, she can't because there's really nowhere for her to go. There's costumes all over. There's props. You know, there's, there's publicity, all kinds of stuff. I just want to get through a tour and coast into the Highland. Like, I look toward that Emporium deal like, oh, yeah. You know, because it's just a lovely event at the Catlin House. It's so pretty. And, you know, it's, it's a relaxing thing. You, well, you know yourself. When you're doing something that you don't have to plan. And just be a part of. It's just really, really nice. So that's it. I'm looking to coast through, get through two tours safely, and coast into the holiday season. Well, Julie, it's wonderful having you back on as a guest. Tell us about the book again quickly. It is The Center Street Martyrs. Okay. And it is an interesting tale of things that maybe not so pretty side of life in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And you can get it at the Lackawanna Historical Society or the Library Express or on the Dunmore Cemetery Tour. Okay. Uh, we have the event at the Viewmont Mall with uh, local organizations getting together yep. to promote local history and storytelling and things like that. Um, and then we have the Dunmore Cemetery. And when are the dates again on, on October that? October 1st and 8th. Admission is free. It's a two-hour tour. Comfortable walking shoes are suggested. About how long is the tour now? I think it's probably going to run about an hour and a half. Okay. Depend it always depends on the size of the crowd. If you have 800 people, moving 800 people through a cemetery takes a little bit because you got to wait for them, you know. So it depends on the size of the crowd. But And we have had up to 800 people in one audience at a time. Well, congratulations, Julie, on another... Uh, historical research book that you're getting out there, another we know will be a successful cemetery tour again, and just all the things that you do in our community on keeping history and storytelling in the arts alive. So Julie, I want to thank you for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. I'm Bob Savikinas. Thank you for tuning into our program in a nutshell. <laughs>